Welcome to Set It and Forget It, Using Workflows to Enhance Your SaaS Security, Better Cloud Altitude Workshop. My name is Matt Svensson, and I'm a Senior Security Engineer here at Better Cloud. Hi, my name is Sean Harmouth, and I'm the Implementation Manager here at Better Cloud. Companies are moving more and more data, likely to more than one SaaS application every day. This creates the potential for sensitive data to be shared externally, resulting in data exposure, both accidentally and maliciously. It's hard to natively in these SaaS applications, look through the files you have, who they're shared with. It could take hours to do this, if it's possible at all, to validate that they are done securely. This is one of the problems that Better Cloud can help you with by allowing you to audit all your current data across all of your SaaS applications that you integrate with us to remediate violations that exist today and create automated workflows to notify you and to enforce security policies across all of your files. Doing this will help you avoid the loss of sensitive data and customer trust. And if you're in a regulated environment, this will also help you avoid potential fines for violations. So today we'll go over auditing current file sharing settings and content, how to create alerts and workflows to automate the remediation of new violations, do a demo and some closing thoughts. As a security practitioner, one of the most difficult things in SAS migration for me has been understanding what data I have, where they are and who has access to it. We no longer live in an environment where we have a Active Directory file share only, where we can go in, manage that on-premise device, and control and view the files natively in Windows as an example. So the first step to solving that problem for you is that we synchronize all of your file metadata, like file names, permissions, and users that files are shared with across all the SaaS file storage applications that you have, and make that available to you in one single view that we call Files Grid. As we'll show you, you can then leverage those data to monitor and create alerts and workflows around these files based upon your company policies and how data are managed. When you first join Better Cloud, one of the first things you'll probably do is a full synchronization of your integrations files to understand what you currently have and with whom those data are shared with. This is a one-time manual audit of your files to true up any current security issues that you have and understand where you're at. For example, when you first synchronize all your files, you might look and see that you have one single user that continually shares all their files with their personal account. They might do this because they wanna do work on their personal device. And the easiest way they can do that is to share it with their personal Gmail account and work from their own device. Or you might find that an individual continually creates public links to share files instead of sharing those files directly with the end user with whom they wanna share the file. A file and share and audit can also be useful if you have new regulatory compliance requirements or do merger and acquisition activity that requires you to look over a new company SaaS applications files. Now that you have all the files that you have across your SaaS applications synchronized and you've reviewed all the sharing details, the next thing is to figure out what's in them. Leveraging the Google DLP API, we scan your documents for over 90 different out of the box identifiers, such as credit cards and social security numbers. This can be done on files such as CSVs, office documents, and Google Docs, as well as PDFs. If there are custom data that you want to search for, like a confidential project name within the company, you can use a regex or a keyword search to look across all your files. OK, so why is content scanning important? The reason it's important is that your users can put any file they want into cloud storage, into these SaaS file storage applications, name it whatever they want, so you can't just look for creditcards.txt to find all your credit cards. You have to look across all the files inside them to see what's actually there. And you have to do this on an ongoing basis as the files change. As an example, 
You might find that you have credit card information in the team folder. When you go to that team and ask them what's going on, they might tell you that they have to do purchases with vendors that don't accept online payments. These vendors might only accept payments through fax or through email. To keep a historic log of all those purchases they've done, they have to store those purchase requests in a SaaS storage application. Well, now you know the data you have in your SaaS storage, you know the business case that they have for storing it there, and you can make a business decision around whether or not that's acceptable for you or not. So this not only gives you the ability to improve your security, it gives you the ability to understand what data you have and why you have that there to be able to make a good business decision about it. Okay, now that you have a list of all the files in your SaaS applications, what they have in them, and understand the business case about why they're there and with whom they're shared. The final step is to create go forward policies as we call them on those business decisions and policies that you've created. These allow you to continually monitor your files for changes, such as looking for files that were just shared publicly with workflows so that you can automatically create an alert to notify you and to unshare the files if that's against your policies. You don't have to go back manually through your files ever again. These policies will watch in real time for changes to your files. And now I'll turn it over to Sean for a demo of these capabilities. Okay, so let's get into the Better Cloud interface. On the left side, uh, let's go to Files Browse. As you can see, you've got all of your files across all your providers. You're gonna check and see uh, what kind of sharing is happening. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, filter the integration column just to narrow this down. You can pick one or more. Uh, you could say, or another one. In this case, we'll just stick with Google. And we'll see what's being shared with Google. So the unshared ones we don't necessarily care about. So we are going to pick public as the permission. We can see we've got a lot of files shared to the public. So let's start looking and seeing what we've got. Maybe the owner you want to look at as you try to figure out whether any of these violate your policy or a policy you're building uh, that may violate in the future. Uh, you can filter on name. Let's take a look and see if we've got anything, uh, let's say confidential, nothing confidential, that's good. How about passwords? Got a couple of files there uh, that are passwords. How about uh, internal only, for example? All right, so we've got some internal onlys shared to the public. Clearly this is a violation or it should be. So let's go ahead and remediate that. You can click one or more or all of them. Uh, on the top right, you can hit the actions button uh, to go ahead and take action against this. And because these are Google files, I will go ahead and choose the Google. So I'm gonna do um, set file sharing settings. So those are publicly shared. They clearly say internal only. I'm gonna bring this back. Uh, you can decide how far you want back, maybe your whole domain, maybe anyone with a link, maybe just the specific people, up to you. Uh, this integration, because we have two here, you may have two Google instances, or you may have one. If you have two, we're going to ask you which one you want. You can see that we've selected files, 35, and we're going to pull back the sharing settings to specific people. And you can also do permissions as well while you're at it. When you hit take action, we'll go ahead and remove that public sharing uh, and take care of that one. Another thing you might want to look at is uh, external sharing. So we've got even one that's externally shared as well to internal only. We can take care of that. Um, but maybe there's other names here. Maybe is there a, a internal, internal only uh, passwords? We've got a password. Got some confidentials. So these are shared externally. You want to go ahead and remediate those as well. So um, 
anything confidential shared externally may or may not be violating. If you want to see who they're shared with, you can go ahead to the shared with column and take a look and see uh, who the external is that they're sharing with, see some metadata on that. Um, you can also filter um, for something shared with, let's say, instead of um, anything shared with, how about we're just looking for Gmail stuff. So if you've got some stuff shared with Gmail, that also says confidential. But even if you remove confidential, you may see, do I have anything shared uh, with Gmail at all? Maybe we have a policy that nothing should be shared with Gmail. Uh, maybe I want to see whether something is shared with a competitor. So we've got something with a competitor, maybe, or another competitor. So this is how we look and see what's being done now as we build our security policy, or we check to see if uh, the security policy is being violated that uh, exists. So go ahead and mitigate those the same way. You just highlight them, go to your action, remove uh, the sharing that's inappropriate. So once you have done that across your file providers, uh, you then don't really wanna come back here and do this all the time. So the focus here is workflows. How do we get to a workflow? Well. Uh, we're going to start with an alert. So once you've remediated this and you're worried about the future and you want to enforce it automatically, uh, you go ahead and, and build an alert, for example. So let's build an alert. You come over to uh, the alerts manage. You look at your alerts. There's various kinds. Templates are there. So I want to stop sharing to a competitor, for example. So I'll start with a, a template. And this is Google Files, for example. So file shared externally. I'll start with that template. It's going to ask me to name it. It's going to ask me for the integration if I have more than one Google. Uh, give it a name. It's going to create a custom one off of that template. I'm going to add a condition, and it's going to be something like a shared with competitor. Now I've already built one of those, so let's look at that real quick. Uh, file shared with competitor. So I built it out, named it. The primary condition is it was shared externally. The secondary condition is it was shared with somebody specifically. I publish it. Now we have an alert. Now, an alert by itself isn't going to do anything other than just alert uh, and trigger and, and let you know that this uh, alert has been triggered, uh, which does not make any changes or doesn't really do anything to enforce the policy. The method to do that is workflows. So you come to your workflows, you're going to create a new workflow. You always have to have a when. So we're going to go to the when, we're going to come to the Google, uh, which is what we're dealing with here, the Google alerts. Uh, we're going to pick the Google uh, instance that we were working with. We're going to find that alert we just created. We're going to put that into the when. Okay, so now we have the beginnings of uh, automatically remediating it. We've got uh, a when of that alert. Now we have an if. We do not need an if here. Your conditions are all taken care of within the alert. So when you're triggering from an alert, you don't really need an if condition because you've taken care of that within the alert itself. Now. You come to then. You have all the actions available to you across the integrations that you've connected. Um, in this case, let's talk about um, what we're going to do about this Google file. So you may do something like, I'm going to send the user an email. How do I send the user an email? You've got dynamic fields here on the right, these blue um, brackets. The owner email, I'm going to fill it in and say, I'm going to send it to the owner. I may CC the IT department, security department, somebody. I can do that here. I can also add a second send email if I want to have them be two separate emails. I put the subject in, whatever the subject I want. I may put in something in the body that references the file. So the, the end user or the owner of this file, security, whoever knows what the file name was. And again, with that, your dynamic fields are done here where I would then come to the Google file that was the target. I would do the name, description, whatever it is I wanted to put in there and say, you know, file name. Uh, was shared to a competitor domain, and then whatever message I want to give. Now, then you decide, do you want to remediate it immediately? And if so, how? Uh, in this case, we're going to remove all external file collaborators. That's going to happen automatically. And again, I'm going to target that file. I'm going to say the file uh, in the when trigger is my target, and I'm going to uh, remove file collaborators. You can go so far, again, using all of the uh, actions available to you, uh, you can remove um, that file owner by changing it. You can cross uh, to another integration and do a ticket, create a new ticket. 
Uh, again, filling in with dynamic fields uh, from that targeted file. You can uh, send a Slack message. Um, you can then, you know, if you have code 42, block the user. You basically have available to you all of the actions um, that you do um, that are normally available here uh, for the integrations you've connected. So build yourself a workflow that will take the actions necessary to comply with your policy and what it is you want to do. Give it a name and then you're going to publish it. Save it and publish it. Once you've published it, then at that point, anytime this alert is triggered, it will do something, which is run this workflow. And then this workflow will take care of it uh, as you see fit. Uh, and you will not have to continually audit and check and see what people are doing. You'll just, as a go forward method, uh, take care of it immediately when it happens. So uh, that's for file sharing. And we can now move on to the other side of it, which is you may very well have files that um, are allowed to be shared. It's okay to share externally, but uh, what, uh, file, uh, what the file may contain uh, is problematic. So what would that be? We'll come over to the files, there's browse, let's go to scans. When you come into scans, you won't have anything. Uh, these were built out in a demo environment, yours will be blank and you're gonna start with a new scan. Now, there's certain ways you can run this. You could run a scan for public and external across all your integrations, and you could do your data selection and pick everything you were worried about, but that is problematic in the results in that you may have a lot of violations if you have too many conditions you're looking for across too many file providers. So you might wanna break that down and create multiple scans uh, specific to the things you're looking for. So. What I'll do here is I'll say, I'm going to look for public files, as I did when I looked at my existing file data set uh, in the files grid. And I'm going to not do everybody. I'm going to just do Google for this time. I'm not going to pick a file owner or share it with. We tell you how many files you'd have selected uh, under those conditions. I'm now going to say, okay, I'm looking for general PII. But let's review this. You've got predefined data. It's set by default to the United States, but you can pick something else if you're looking for Canada or something. You've got various categories, security, other general PII. General PII is the, the most popular that uh, people do. Let's say SSN, I'm gonna pick SSN. Um, and again, you want to keep that narrow so you don't have too many hits. So I'm gonna do SSN for now. Now you've got financial stuff like bank records if that's what you're looking for. The other category generally is for industry specific items. If you're in the healthcare industry, you worry about HIPAA violations. If you're in education, you might be worried about um, self-harm, profanity, weapons, uh, things like that. So the other kind of is a catch-all for specific industries. So now I've picked something. Now I may wanna add one more, uh, or maybe I don't wanna do a selection in the predefined, I wanna do some custom data. So you can use keywords or regular expressions and build those out and add them into here as well. You might wanna maybe add a keyword of SSN, so that when we find something that looks like a social security number, and the document also contains the word SSN or the letters SSN, uh, that might give you better hits and less um, false alerts. In that case, you wanna do all if you've got multiple and you wanna make all of them there. If you're looking for either SSN or passport, then you do in any. So pick the data you're, you're looking for. Uh, and then you're going to summarize. So we'll tell you how many files are selected down here. You did public, Google, match any of these. And here's where it becomes important, the naming convention. So in this one, we knew we did Google. Uh, we knew we were looking for public and SSN, for example. So this helps us uh, in the results know exactly what this is and what we're looking for and reduce the number we've got to review. When you begin scan, um, I'm not going to do that now, but you get an in progress and it shows the start date, the name of it, the status with the bar and what's happening there. And then when it's done, of course, it shows up here. So Google public PII, for example, would show up. Now you notice there's some zero violations. That's because we are scanning um, everything you asked us to scan and just showing you the violations at the top and the, the other files that do not have violations. So the way to remediate this is of course, maybe look at them, look into the violation, uh, we are masking the results. We say we found an SSN in this file owned by Jason. Um, the view file is available here, but it doesn't always help you in the sense of it depends on what exactly this file is. If this file was public, 
um, and you in public, everyone would have access and you clicked on that, you would um, be able to see it. So it would open up and you'd see it because it was clearly publicly shared. Um, if you were doing a scan and it was you know, externally shared or otherwise, and you as the admin looking at this did not have permission, then you'd see the pop-up uh, from the provider, the normal, you don't have rights, ask for it or whatever their error messages are. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come through and you're gonna create a bunch of scans. Um, it may be one scan, it may be 10, it may be 20, it just depends on what you're looking for and how many providers you have. And this is how you are then gonna determine what kind of content people are putting in, what kind of content are they sharing, uh, and then remediating that um, and making sure that you've got yourself to a place where you no longer have violations. And then like we did with the file grid and sharing, you can do the same thing with content. You wanna make sure maybe no one is ever gonna share public, uh, publicly share PII, SSNs or anything else. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to come to our alerts manager. We're gonna look for an alert that will help us find um, SSN. So the custom one has been built, but let me show you the template, which is basically sensitive data. There's a sensitive data alert you would open up. It said sensitive data was found in a file. When you open that template, you'll get Google file. You'll go ahead and name it. In this case, I named it specifically so I know what that alert is for. And you get a custom. So this is a sensitive data scan. When you come down, you notice you've got content scanning. So the same thing applies, just like you did elsewhere. This is gonna let you pick what you did and what you're looking for in the same way, the same interface here. Uh, notice we do not do in, uh, include private files. That would be a larger data set. You could check that. We'll give you a warning that there's gonna be a lot of files we're gonna look at. In this case, it's just uh, sensitive data in files that are shared. You're gonna publish that and then you have an alert. And as I said before, the alert, by itself isn't gonna do anything other than trigger and let you know what happened. You wanna put that into a workflow so that you can remediate that automatically uh, with these workflows. So in this particular one, let's say you're gonna come in here to the WAN, you're gonna pick the Google alert, content scanning, social security number shared, or whatever alert it is that you are con concerned with. And then again, you don't need an if, you're gonna pick uh, your thens what actions do you want to take? And all of the actions are available to you here. It may be confined to just do things in Google, but as you can see, you can pick any of them, uh, you know, across to other providers you've got, um, other integrations you've added here. So Google, we may set the file permissions, the sharing settings. We might remove the collaborators from the file, set other uh, download uh, permissions, send the user an email again, we will use a send email and we could CC security or otherwise, or add another send mail separately uh, and send a Slack message. Again, just like with our other uh, workflow, you've got available to you all the actions that you need to do uh, to take care of that, to make sure that the files are in compliance with your security policy. All right, so we've shown you now in the interface um, how to remediate what you have currently to get yourself to a good baseline, and then uh, how you can um, remediate those in the future without having to come back and manually look at everything. So now we'll go back to Matt. Thank you, Sean. As you have seen, Better Cloud is a powerful platform that allows you to centralize and automate the security of your files across your SaaS environment enabling you to do a file audit to establish a baseline for violations and threats and create business policies around them and to set up go forward policies based on your business requirements to continually monitor your files for external sharing and content scanning violations and create automated workflows to notify you and remediate the security issue. Thank you all for attending this session and we hope you found this helpful. If you're a customer and want to deep dive some of these features, please reach out to your account team. If you're not a customer, please visit our website to request a demo, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Altitude.